voice. Uh, I am Yanni, your host, and excited to be with you guys on this Sunday morning, uh, ready to get moving, ready to strike a pose, and then strike um, at the madness that's going on in the world today. Welcome, everyone. Glad to have you guys here. Um, here we are on another beautiful Sunday, September 9th, 2020, excited about all the things we're going to be talking about today, but most of all, excited about us fighting for this country. Um, there's so many things I want to start off with today, and you know, we we have a a situation in this country with the media that's not honest. We have a media that's attacking 72 million American citizens. 72. 72 million American citizens that feel like they're, they were disfranchised, feels like they were removed, feels like their, vo their vote was canceled. And so, yes, uh, does the president have an uphill battle? We're still in the midst of counting in some states, in the midst of recounting in other states. And as far as the people are concerned, the American people, and the American people have an ability to, to gauge, to understand, uh, to make sure that the election process is safe and secure. Uh, it's our right. It's our birthright. But the media, the American media doesn't seem like that. They don't think that way. And before we get off into this, just know you guys can drop me an email over at America's Heartbeat at Yahoo.com. That's America's Heartbeat at Yahoo.com. And you can find other episodes over at SoundCloud at the American's Voice and Yanni. But I want to kind of build a little bit of a uh of a a scenario for everyone, so to speak. A scenario to be able to put us in a position to where while we're looking and waiting, while we're anticipating what might happen, see, no one really knows. But one thing I do have a problem with, and I want to just, you know, share this real briefly is people are calling Joseph R. Biden. Joseph, hi, Joseph, time for breakfast. Coming, mommy. As he forgets where he's at. Oh, that was younger Joe. But they're calling this man President-elect Biden. To be honest with you guys, I don't really like the way that sounds. It's not because I'm biased towards a particular candidate, which I am. But even if I wasn't, if Joe Biden, I felt in my heart, and I'm speaking for a, a ton of American citizens that feel like their voice, their vote was muted or canceled. Um, I speak for them. My wife's been frustrated with the whole process. My wife is looking in... in, in my wife voted for the first time this year for Donald Trump and she voted proudly for Donald Trump. But with all the debacle, the things that the president warned us about, with all the confusion and the derision that he warned us about many, many months ago, almost prophetic to the letter, Donald Trump let us all know what will happen. Guys, Donald Trump is looking at things from a business mindset. That's one thing we we'll always have to remember. It's that mindset. Business. Most people don't have that. Well, this man does. And, and the beautiful thing about business, it has an ugly side. Success isn't pretty. A success, you know, it takes time to work hard, to put your crap together, put a plan together. And most of all, to be able to execute execution is the key and speaking of joe biden before i move on china how come china is excited about the joe biden presidency how come all their currency rose how come iran is excited about working with biden you know one person ain't excited about working with biden i can tell or he's being reserved, but I know he probably wants him as President Putin or dictator Putin. He wants Biden in. 
And so as you guys look at the stock market, you guys look at the way certain particular world leaders respond to Joe Biden, like Maduro down in Venezuela, starving his people, eating out of trash cans, no toilet paper. Makes you have to step back and say, hmm, something doesn't seem right about this guy. Something doesn't seem right about the whole situation. How about the night of the election? All the irregularities when you have the media crowning presidents. You have the media telling us to shut up and suck it up. Whoopi Goldberg, which no one really cares about what you say. You have a media telling you that this is the choice that America made and I just can't buy it. I've ran tracks in my mind. Here, there a little, up, down, back, forth, calculating. And every single conclusion I come to, even looking at something last night called um, Bradford's Law, talking about a pattern, predictable pattern that everything follows, which will not point out fraud. But realistically, the irregularities are something else. It's just too many. We have two, the 2000 presidential election, Bush versus Gore. You guys remember that one, right? And there was a recount in a particular state. And this particular recount and this whole situation took about 37 days. And in the midst of that time, he was being called vice president-elect Gore by his people too. But what they're doing with Biden, it's a tragedy. It's a travesty. It's a disgrace. Because they're sitting here crowning this guy. They're trying to put him in positions of power. The most powerful man in the world. You can see, by the way, other world leaders respond to him. But the problem I have with that is I didn't vote for him. For four years, they bashed President Trump and his followers. For four years, they called us racist, called him racist. For four years, every single full-throated attack, including impeachment, including the Ukraine scandal, including the, the, the attacking of him and soldiers, the lies about the soldiers, Every single turn, the Democrat Party has played dirty. We should call them the Dirty Crats. I think I like that one. The Democrats equals the Dirty Crats because they fight dirty. Now, I can see if you fought dirty and fair. That's one thing. These guys don't do none. And so, before I really start tearing deeply off into these traitors of our country... This is kind of where all the, the madness started. I picked up a little article from Pennsylvania because no one wants to report on the news anymore. And this was back in uh, early October, no, late October 31st, 2019. And you look at the confusion with Pennsylvania, for instance. This stuff could not have happened overnight. They did this Last year, when people weren't paying attention, you do it too close to election, it's a problem. But it says seven big changes to voting in Pennsylvania just signed into law. And it, it was a little article in a place called Patch, Newtown, Pennsylvania. You know, they got a little, their little news local. Um, but they said Herings, Herringsburg, Pittsburgh, or Pennsylvania. Governor Tom Wolf on Thursday signed an election reform bill that will implement several voter friendly election reforms now why are we making voter more voter friendly i thought our votes and the way that we vote was good enough you get your lazy red out the bed you brush your teeth wash your face you fill out your ballot and you go and you drop it off if you have an absentee ballot same thing you get out of bed you wash your face you brush your teeth you fill out your ballot and you mail it out after you request it but I, I grow weary with a, a media and a country of people that believe an alternate universe that doesn't exist. Remember 2016, we had the little Hillary, they were printing out all types of things and Madam President and blah, blah, blah. The scary thing about this, ladies and gentlemen, 
the Madam President could happen within six to seven months, to be honest with you. And for them to save face and make sure that the Republicans ain't right, they might wait a year. But with their agenda and the radical Kamala Harris, they want her fast because this agenda needs to move. Joe Biden doesn't really have the guts to push back on AOC and the squad and all those like. It's really amazing. But it says, including no, ex including no excuse mail-in voting. Okay, friendly voter reforms. Let me ask you a question. Why do we have the governor trying to reform voting when we haven't had a problem really from what we know in past elections? Trust me, I went back and I looked at and studied election processes, electoral colleges from 1979 to present day. And it's so amazing how the maps pop from time to time. You can tell the when the Republican message is falling on deaf ears and it's getting stale to the American people because before Trump, ladies and gentlemen, the Republicans had no backbone and a lot of them still don't. There's, there's not even a spine. It's just, I don't know what's back there walking like this and they're slumped over. They sit in their chair at an angle. But they had no spine. But Donald Trump taught them how to fight. Donald Trump taught them what it looks like to not quit. That's the reason why over 400 miles of wall is still built. That's the reason why people are rising up in the streets. That's why people are upset about the results of the election. Not because it was fair. And get me, don't get me wrong, ladies and gentlemen. If, if President Trump had lost fair and square, not a problem. A majority of the supporters will have no problem. But here's a problem that I have. The late night algorithms. This keeps coming back and it's a subject of conversation. Not in the media rooms, but probably Newsmax, OAN, American One News. Uh, you know, those things are, those mediums, those outlets, they're giving the news. And then people like us, Mark Levin, Sean Haney, Laura Ingram. Um, but going back to the media, one thing that surprised me about this whole thing, and I'm going to finish with this article here, Fox News. I think they've overplayed their hand. I think they've made some serious mistakes, and I think they've uh, committed suicide, to be honest. The calls are growing more and more to get Fox News knocked out the box. Not trying to boycott them, but taking their business elsewhere. Trust me, ladies and gentlemen, Twitter, Facebook, Google, all these platinum, uh, these uh, platforms, they're going to be dealt with soon by the American people, not by the government. The government has no, the government is inept right now. They have no skills or ability. They're done. But with the power of the government, with Donald Trump behind the reins, some things get done. But just think about what could have been done this first hundred days, a lot. So it says right here, the law allows Pennsylvania residents to vote by mail up to 50 days before an election without an excuse. Now let's break this down real quick. 50 days before an election without an excuse. A lot of times, 50 days, we're talking about nearly two months. No, no debates, no, no clashing of the candidates. How can you truly make a decision on who you want to vote for? What if a scandal breaks for the candidate you gave your vote for? And let's say in mass, it was 60% that voted for this guy or this woman. You know, we have to be politically correct, right? We have to be politically correct. And without excuse, that doesn't make sense to me either. Well, I missed school for four days, you know what I mean? Just make it lenient, more lenient for the students. You know, you come back, not a big deal. That's not the case. Voters can elect to be placed on a list to permanently receive a ballot application by mail. It also extends voter registration times and authorizes a 90 million bond to help counties fund the purchase of new voting systems with paper with the paper trail. The state house representatives on Tuesday advanced the bill in a 138 to 61 vote. Later that day, the state Senate approved it 35 to 14 vote. Let's, Let's just say we kind of know who the bulk of those who voted for it are. Democrats, 
This bill makes voting more convenient and more secure for millions. The convenient part, yes. The secure, no. What an absolute fraud. So, Governor Wolf, this is the biggest change to our elections in generations and will strengthen democracy by removing barriers. Guys, the fix has been in for a long time is what I'm saying. This is where this crap started here. And don't doubt me on this. I was talking to my wife the other day, last week to be, be exact. And I told her this. I said, I believe a great bulk of the drama or the epicenter, I believe it's right there in Pennsylvania. I believe Pennsylvania is the mob boss location, not too far from their crime boss, Joe Biden. And how would a country respond? Let's say Joe Biden wins, okay? Which we have the media proclaiming it's electoral college who, who elects the president. Well, let's just say this game here. Let's just say this happens and, and he does become president. The media already, when he gave his little speech a couple days ago, talking about we all have to come together. That one right there has so many people furious. But when he gets in, if he gets in, it's on. The game is going to change, period. So that's where it started. A certain time, everything in five states stopped like clockwork. You guys remember that, like a cog in the wheel. Seeing the momentum change and go the other way, this big old giant wheel you see, big old wheel rolling. And all of a sudden, without any force, without any hill, without any resistance, this big giant cog just, it will, just stops. And mind you, it doesn't just stop rolling the direction it is. On flat land, no inertia, no, no momentum, no pushing, nothing guys nothing and the will started going the other way in the favor of joseph r biden that's curious to me as i said i studied all these presidential elections electoral charts and maps and and the like and i've never seen an anomaly quite like this here you have a potted eggplant that's had foreign dealings and entanglements which the media which were supposed to be journalists have not gotten to the bottom of the American people should have a problem with that. But there's nothing to see here. Nothing to see here. It brings me to the subject of round, you know, um, the ground game he was talking about a couple weeks ago. Which the whole over media looked at, looked over, overlooked it. And I'm going to play you the video because it's him. Or maybe is it a clone? You got some people out there that got the tinfoil hats. It's like, oh yeah, they took out this person. I guess just like five up President Trumps or whatever. I don't really bend that way. My mom thinks like that too. Um, but to me, I look at it like this. Joe Biden didn't quite look like himself, but it was him. It was his voice and everything. And he admitted, Mr. Biden said something that the whole media. Overlooked. And in fact, this has all been planned for quite some time, more than three months. Like I told you, the president, the, the, the Governor Wolf situation was last year. Almost a year ago, they were setting up ducks trying to get the, their agenda pushed through. And so the night of the election, um, people went to sleep. Before they went to sleep, there was a situation in Georgia. And there was some type of water main break or something like that. And for some reason, when that happened... I had a feeling in my gut. It just didn't feel right, ladies and gentlemen. And that right there, I believe, was the signal. You know, when there's an explosive device, you have a detonator. The detonator sends a signal to the explosions and explosions blow up. Well, it was the same thing with the water main break. This was their little, it's time. Because how does Wisconsin, how does Michigan, how does Pennsylvania, how does Georgia, how do these states stop at the same time? And then not just that, the president starts to lose. Now, I looked at all these maps, ladies and gentlemen, it doesn't make sense. And so that's set off the fireworks. Before I get off of that, though, I want, I want you to look at Joe Biden here and listen to the words. Look at him. 
It's him. It's not an imposter. It's not me. It's not you. It's not anybody else. It's Joseph R. Biden, the fake phony president elect, because he has not been qualified. Let's start with video bite number one, please. We have put together, I think, the most extensive and inclusive voter fraud organization in the history of American politics. Isn't that just amazing? Isn't that just amazing? The biggest fraud, fraud in American history, okay? The, the, the ground game is, is the biggest fraud. Fraud is the word we're looking for right there. And he's a fraud, and he knows he is. So that takes me to Sidney Powell. She was on with Maria Bartiromo on Sunday. She started talking about the irregularities and the problems. Um, and to me, realistically, this defines the whole thing. Wasn't just one. We have them in multiple states, tons of counties. And now, I believe when it's all said and done, a plethora of witnesses, affidavits are being signed, everything like that. These things are now coming in. So I want to get off into Maria Bartiroma and Sydney Powell. Video bite three. Let's check that out. And you guys make your own job. Sydney Powell is General Michael Flynn's attorney. She is fighting on the front lines of this battle as part of the president's legal team. Sydney, good morning to you. Thank you for being here. Can you walk good, us through what has good taken morning, place Maria. here as you see it? Yes, there has been a massive and coordinated effort to steal this election from we, the people of the United States of America, to delegitimize and destroy votes for Donald Trump, to manufacture votes for Joe Biden. They have done it in every way imaginable, from having dead people vote in massive numbers to absolutely fraudulently uh, creating ballots that exist only voting for Biden. We've identified at least four. 150,000 ballots in the key states that miraculously only have a mark for Joe Biden on them and no other candidate. If you look at Florida, where things were done right, you can see that that's how the rest of the country should have gone. But they also used an algorithm to calculate the votes they would need to flip. And they used the computers to flip those votes from Biden, to, I mean, from Trump to Biden and from other Republican candidates to their competitors also. I think Doug Collins had the race stolen from him. I think uh, John James had his race stolen from him. It wasn't just President Trump. There were many people affected by this. We have got to fight tooth and nail in federal court to expose this abject fraud and the conspiracy behind it and get a recount. And and audits in every place it's needed, which is frankly most of the country. So and here we have a prosecutor, not just any prosecutor, not any just hack or slip and fall lawyer. Sydney Powell is spot on. She's talking about uh, the Biden checks. How we have ballots towards only one person check, unless you're trying to rush. And the stories will come out, ladies and gentlemen. How about Florida? How come Florida was done about two or three hours after the polls closed, which should be a model, she says, for the rest of the country? She talked about the algorithms that you guys saw, stopping and calculating and things like that. Guys, to be honest with you, I go back to old voter machines, pull the handle, <laughs> counting the votes. Now, we can use technology, but you're telling me that dancing with the stars, that the, 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 the voice show that they have on television that these people can get votes like that with their technology and define who a winner is now could there be cheating there too it could always be a, a aspect of cheating or but not there i look at this whole situation and it's just sickening totally sickening and the media being complacent when we're providing information like this and so we have a case here being built the right way, not being built by the media, not being built by, you know, the, the president elect and no one's giving, you know, no, that's not the media's responsibility. And I don't know how we got this Twitter verse to what we think. So examine the media everywhere. Everyone wants to rush to judgment. And I have to ask the question and Mark Levin asked the question too. I'm sure. Why is everybody in a rush? 
if there are irregularities, let's say your car, for instance, if your car is not running right, why would you try to rush to go on a trip instead of getting your car in the shop and trying to make sure everything's with your car so you can have a successful trip? No, they're rushing to judgment. Everyone's crowning him king. They're wishing, they're praying, and they're focused. Hmm. Straight focus. And they're rushing to get Washington back to the way it used to be. You guys remember the good old boys, right? They want Washington, they want the Obama years. We don't want it. They want those Obama years. They, they want America being denounced amongst the world. China. And as I'm sitting here talking, I'm looking at a box here in, this, in, in the studio here. And made in China, step big as day. It's an embarrassment. How about made in America? Hell, how about even made in Canada? Made in Mexico. Can I get made in Mexico, please? You can't even get that anymore. Made in China. And the reason why China's excited because they got their man, they think. And you guys should all be terrified because the, the Hunter Biden and the laptop from hell has not been efficiently and effectively covered. Joe Biden and the things that he said withholding billions of dollars have not been effectively covered by the media. And ladies and gentlemen, don't expect it to happen. The media are immune to facts. So they want to rush. But we say not so fast. Because if we do not get this right, ladies and gentlemen, if we don't stop and stop back, stop for a second and say, wait a minute, this is just too many irregularities. I don't think it's just Trump people across the country because we play fair. We play by the rules. Trump takes everything to court like he's supposed to. We have a problem if we don't get this right. And I think Lindsey Graham said it best. You will never, ever have a Republican candidate for president again. And that should really terrify you guys. Look at Venezuela and look at the condition that they're in down there. And if you think it can't happen here, you better think again because we're on the chopping block and the one with the big giant chopper is the Democrats and these crazy flaming liberal leftists. But we're gonna continue and get you guys the information that you need on the other side of the break here on the America's Voice. Be right back. going on right now we know that in georgia you have a list of numbers of ballots with only joe biden on the ticket you say it's ninety-eight thousand ballots in pennsylvania 80 to ninety thousand in georgia another forty-two thousand in arizona 69 to 115 thousand in michigan and sixty-two thousand in wisconsin sending if this is true this appears systemic where is the Department of Justice? Where is the AG Bill Barr? If this is so obvious, then why aren't we seeing massive government investigations? 
I don't know. We definitely should be. I mean, we're getting reports of all kinds of fraud. We've got a, getting an affidavit from a postal worker now who talks about having been ordered to backdate ballots. No ballots received after the polls closed on voting day should even be counted. We've got multiple states that didn't even follow the rules of their own legislature. That's a federal constitutional issue. There are at least three major federal issues here that will require the Supreme Court to resolve these this case. And when the okay. votes are really audited and the real votes are counted, Trump will win. He is the president and he is in charge of this country. Does she not sound convincing to you? Here we have 98,000 ballots. 42,000, 69 to 115,000 Michigan, 15,000 in Wisconsin. This here, with all these irregularities here, and ballots just marked, like I said, with Joseph Biden's name on there. Joseph? And then you have states not following the election rules. They hate this man so much. They want him gone. They hate this man so much. They want to spoil the party. They hate this man so much. They will destroy their country, their own country. Talking about people, this is what I call akin to American, American cannibalism. Eating our own. Eating our country. I'd rather destroy this damn country than let Donald Trump have four more years because we hate him so much. He's such a racist. He's such a dictator. Well, we're, we have Joe Biden on the other side talking about mass mandates, locking people down. Who's the dictator? Ask yourself that question. So it blows my mind. We have another issue here with software. OK, and the media wants you to move on. It's just it's a hoax. While they've been perpetrating a hoax on the American people for nearly four years. So we have that issue. And in and, and just a moment. Sydney Powell, she's going to take the hat to him. And, and I love this because the states, the multiple counties, the multiple states, she says this is bigger than what we think. It's bigger than what we know. And so it does take some scrutiny. I believe it takes some looking at every single one of these situations here because she's sharp as a tack. And believe me, she will never, ever go out there and breathe misinformation mistruths or, or something that has not been clarified her as an attorney a prosecutor she knows these things are extremely important but let's think about this and people are trying to push this down too as well think about who has a stock in this software that's being used in many many places hmm it makes you say hmm let's go with video bite number five and we are going to keep moving. Video Byte 5, let's we go. We talked about the Dominion software. I know that there were voting irregularities. Tell me about that. That's to put it mildly. The computer glitches could not and should not have happened in at, at all. Those, that is where the fraud took place, where they were flipping votes in the computer system or adding votes that did not exist. We need an audit of all of the computer systems that uh, played any role in this fraud whatsoever. And, you know, Joe Biden had it right. He said that he had the biggest voter fraud organization ever and he didn't need people's votes now. He would need people later. They had this all planned, Maria. They had the algorithms. They had the paper ballots waiting to be inserted if and when needed. And notably, President Trump's vote in the blue states went up enormously. That's when they had to stop the vote count and go in and replace votes for Biden and take away Trump votes. I've never seen votes. Voting machines stop in the middle of an election, stop down and assess the situation. I also see reports that Nancy Pelosi's longtime chief of staff is a key executive at that company. Richard Blum, Senator Feinstein's husband, significant shareholder of the company. What can you tell us about the interest on the other side of this Dominion software? Well, obviously, they have invested in it for their own reasons and are using it to commit this fraud to steal votes. I think they've even stolen them from other Democrats in their own party who should be outraged about this also. Uh, Bernie wow. Sanders might very well have been the Democratic candidate, but they've stolen against whoever they wanted to steal it from. 
and now what you're starting to see, you're beginning to see Sydney Powell, which is a sharp attorney. She's starting to lay the framework. She's putting the frames together. As well as Ju Rudy Giuliani, which Sydney Powell is a better communicator of the message and front person for the president, as well as the rest of the team. Um, bad voting software, which people are trying to debunk. Um, and you have the people in the Democrat Party that has stake in the company. This here is a conflict of interest. Now, I can understand that people have their own political bends, but people that are in Congress or connected to Congress running this kind of software and stuff, it makes you wonder and say, hmm. And so that goes to this so-called glitch. We talk about these votes that are being flipped for Donald Trump, and if you guys haven't heard about it, I'm going to tell you about it. Breitbart, brim tip to them. There's a piece over at Breitbart that I was checking out, and they're talking about software not properly giving uh, the right um, candidates their votes. Software not properly updated gave Biden thousands of votes in Michigan. Believe me, ladies and gentlemen, I bet you there are thousands of votes other places too, all over the all over the country. The election software that glitched in both Georgia and Michigan, it says which is in Michigan's case, incorrectly gave Joe Biden thousands of votes. It's being used in 28 states. Hear me out, ladies and gentlemen. It's being used in 28 states, according to the software company's website. The software company Dominion Voting Systems glitched in Michigan, causing thousands of ballots that were meant for Republican candidates, candidates to be wrongfully counted for the Democrats in the United States, Atram County. Atram is also one of 47 counties in Michigan that uses the same software that experienced this glitch. Now, here's the problem I have with that. How come with the glitch, how come the glitch is not happening in the favor of the Republicans? Can someone tell me that, please? And, ah, don't be going all crazy and crap and telling me that it's conspiracy theories. How come it always goes in the favor of the Democrat? When we have ballots that are coming in by mass, how come it's only for one candidate? To, to, to give yourself some mental clarity and closure. If someone gets murdered, the family wants closure. Well, 72 million other people in this country want closure. Whether Donald Trump wins or lose, we want to make sure that the right person is sitting in the White House. Hey, go on. The presidential election results for Atrium County were later corrected, flipped the county from Joe Biden to President Donald Trump after the glitch was fixed. Why are we having these glitches? I understand bugs and things like that, but I can guarantee you there's more than one glitch. Two Georgia counties which use the same electronic voting software also reported and counting glitches during the 2020 election, which caused their voting machines to crash. A Georgia election official said that the technical glitch that halted voting in the states Spalding and Morgan counties caused by a vendor uploading and updating their election machines the night before the election. That is something they don't they don't ever do. I've never seen them update anything a day before the election, Marsha Ridley said. Election supervisor of Baldwin County Board of Elections. A third county in Georgia, Gwinnett County. Um, it says that which use the same software always experienced, also experienced the glitch. This glitch, however, had caused the delay of counting of thousands of votes in the 2020 presidential election. When all is said and done, ladies and gentlemen, if I want to cause a confusion, if I want to get delay so I can figure out, one, how many votes I need, or two, how much more can I cheat, I'm going to need time. So thus, this is the reason why we have all these states stopping at the same time. Serious, serious problem. And it is totally worth being looked into. A certain time, all the states... Then, to add insult to injury, congressmen, how is it that all the congressmen down ticket are winning their races? How is it that we're probably going to pick up 15 seats in the House of Representatives and the president loses? Guys, this doesn't make sense. How does the, the ticket, the lower ticket win, but the president doesn't? That's akin to me having a big umbrella. OK, and the umbrella is designed to keep me dry. But for some reason, the 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 rain is hitting me. Everyone else under me is safe and protected. 
the, I'm right directly on the umbrella. These guys are down ticket. So how is it possible that I'm getting hit with rain and they're not? How is it possible that they win and the president doesn't? It just doesn't make sense. Looking at algorithms, looking at history, looking at uh, the electoral college and how those things shaped out after, after the case. Nothing makes sense about this, ladies and gentlemen. I've ran tracks back and forth in my mind trying to figure out how an 800,000 vote lead can be windled down to 40,000 in the positive of the other person in a matter of days. How people go to sleep. This ain't going away, guys. It's not going away. We're going to continue, continue to fight. We're not going away. Until we feel in our heart that everything's been answered correctly, we're not, we're not, we're not, no, we're not coming together. After you called us racist all these years, after you called us xenophobes all these years, after you called us bigots all these years, after you called our president Hitler, after you called him a dictator, pot, mal, people are crazy. And so we have the deep blue state of California. And mind you, I can see if, you know, these Senate candidates in the states are smaller. They only get thousands of votes. They never get millions of votes. Ladies and gentlemen, the president of the United States got 72 million votes to more votes than any president, Republican American history. I'm not going to even mention Joe Biden's numbers because I believe they're fraudulent. But how is it possible that this can happen? Question. The president, the president is driving the Republican Party. If the president is the reason behind the enthusiasm, the excitement, the momentum, the shift in the Republican Party, it's a big tent party now. You have Latinos under there. You have uh, Asians under there. You have blacks under there. You have whites under there. You have Cambodians, all types of people under there. And But he's separated from the rest? Do you not think that people will show up and grow to the president and not? They're showing up for, for this, is, this is why it doesn't make sense. 2018, we had the midterm elections and the Republicans' clock got cleaned. Why? Because Trump wasn't on the ballot. Why? Because they don't follow through. Why? Because there's still a level of weakness to them. Why? Because they're not a fighter. Why? Because the American people see through their crap. And so we got our clocks clean. Not as bad as it could have been. Not bad like Obama. But we still got our clocks clean. And so looking at the situation here, um, the president's on the ticket now. He is in the driver's seat of the Republican Party. Here we are. <laughs> the president is driving. So that takes him to California. And here's a, another irregularity that people should really, really pay attention to. Because this one right here, ladies and gentlemen, this one is cold. This is a cold one. I think it is. We have California. You guys know how blue California is. I think he beat Trump in California. In fact, the reason why the popular vote was counted, what got Hillary over the hump in 2016 on the popular vote was California. The reason why the Democrats want to get rid of the Electoral College and the reason why we have to defend these Georgia seats is because they want to ban and get rid of it and they want to make the popular vote. Um, they want the popular vote to be the way how we elect our presidents. And ladies and gentlemen, the way these cities are densely populated with these lefties we can't let that happen but going back to california there's an article here daryl isa returns to congress after victory in california's 50th district now you guys you know daryl isa is a diehard leftist liberal he's a diehard democrat no oh my gosh he is a republican over at Breitbart, Brim Tip, former Republican Daryl Issa, California, has returned to Congress after a victory in a new district, not even in the same district that he was in. In a new district, the Associated Press called his race on Saturday, concluding that he had defeated a Democrat, Amar Kumpa Najjar, who was running for a second term. Guys, stop right there and let that sink to your mind. We're in not Purple County. We're in deep, deep blue California. We're in a state that they call for Joe Biden before any ballot was counted. We're in a state that there's still lockdown in many parts of the state. We're in a state that they're black and they're having blackouts, rolling blackouts. If you have a party, they'll shut your power. California, the non-governors of the United States of America. And what they want to do, the Democrats want to duplicate this California model. But here's a glitch. 
Here is another problem that I have why it doesn't make sense. It says here, ISIS served 18 years as representative for the coastal 49th district, which moved left. Like many coastal districts in California, as wealthy residents began voting Democrat on social and coastal issues, leaving aside the fiscal concerns. He retired in 2019 after barely surviving a challenge in 2016 presidential election, but came back in 2020. In the 50th district, a large district whose current boundaries stretch east of San Diego, inland, and almost to the shore of the Salton Sea. Ladies and gentlemen, how is this happening? If we have President Donald Trump so unpopular, they just want to get rid of him. He is the, the crux of all the problems, not just here in America, but in the world. How is it that this man comes and wins in a completely dark, dark blue state? Something's not adding up. Something's not, but the president loses? This show should be called The President Loses? Really? How is this possible? And so that's something to think about, something to look at over there, um, over at Breitbart. And so those are concerns that American people have. Then you have Fox News. I want to turn off into Fox News. Going to take a quick break, come back, and we're going to devour Fox News because I believe they've made a fatal mistake and they didn't just shoot themselves in the foot, but the 72 million Americans that they've disfranchised, disenfranchised and attempted to still help steal election and support Joe Biden, the fix is in. And the American people are pissed off and I'm pissed off too. And we're going to continue that when we get back on The American's Voice. Super Captain. <laughs> Say that 10 times here on the America's Voice. Welcome back, everybody. Uh, excited to continue to spend time with you guys. You guys are some of the greatest um, audience uh, out there in the broadcasting world, in radio land, in non-censored land. We are not censoring at all here. Everyone's opinion is welcome, mainly mine being the host of the show. Let's continue to dig in, ladies and gentlemen. Um, you know, those irregularities is the crux, as I was talking about on the other side, those irregularities are, are, is what raises suspicions in people's mind. And when I heard that Fox News had called Arizona 
for Joe Biden. I was like, what? You know, we projected this and, you know, what we call and and then you have Brian Kilmeade as they're getting blasted some days later. Oh, that's the that's the, that's the decision the decision made the this decision that's made and we, we got to stick with what they say. Why? If they're still counting, how are we making the decision about who the president, the leader of the free world is going to be? Impossible. Impossible for media, mainstream media who covered the hoax, the Russia hoax, one particular way. Who suppressed information about the Hunter Biden laptop from hell. And believe me, I I'm even starting to think that, you know, not just Fox News being in at this short period of time, I believe Fox News has been slipping for a long, long time. And so to me, Fox News has become a part of the mainstream media. And they're leaving, they're leaving Fox in groves. So many Sundays or days that I, I would watch Fox News. And we have one, Chris Wallace, him and his left. How about Juan Will, Williams? You know, these leftists on that platform, why are they there? Here's the problem. I have a formula here, ladies and gentlemen. A positive and a negative. You guys ready to go to school? Uh, so if we have a positive and a negative, what does that make guys? Huh? Do you guys, you guys know what it makes? Negative, a positive and negative will always create a negative, a positive, and positive keeps a positive, a negative and a negative creates a negative. And so I say that to say this, Chris Wallace, Donna Brazil. Juan Williams and all the other undercover leftists that are working behind the scenes. Do you think that maybe the water or the pool has been tainted or maybe it's Murdoch's kids? No matter how it goes, they become a part of the mainstream media with the exception of Tucker Carlson, Sean Hannity, Laura Ingram. Um, but Fox has done the unforgivable and it's totally clear that they're in the tank for Biden. And we thought that was a safe haven for us. Do 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 do. Trusted news, and so many years you guys remember you going through the airport. CNN. How did CNN get a monopoly on the airports? And cause probably because the people that own those airports and those businesses, they probably lean left. They're not in touch with middle America. They're in touch with that governmental new world order. I'm sitting looking at myself spitting all over the place, just apoplectic about how they're not covering this. How is this possible? And so I thought it was safe. So everyone's moving to Newsmax. And you know what? Like a graceful host, Newsmax is welcoming all of you conservatives. So just like we're recommending you guys go over to Parler, we're bringing the bells, get away from Twitter. The president, as we get Parler, built up some more. Get the hell out of there and start going to news networks that are going to give the news, going to distribute the news effectively and fairly to where we even do our, our, um, our elections. We want people that are going to give our elections fairly, that we're going to distribute the, the ballots, the right ballots, legal ballots, that we're going to count ballots that are legal and right. Is that too much to ask for your country? Is that too much to ask as an American citizen? So here we have Fox News calling Arizona. And this put a bee in the bottom of so many conservatives across the country. It's completely clear that they're sycophants for Joe Biden. And they want him to win. Want him to win. Fox, you guys ain't so foxy no more. Fox, what happened? Just a question. And as the smoke cleared and beginning to clear, you have these pop-ups. And here comes Hyden Hunter Biden appearing on a stage with his dad with this fake pre-election uh, uh, president-elect speeches and crap. How come you can hide all this time but when it's time for your president, your uh, the, the phony president-elect Joe Biden to come out, there he is. When it comes to the media asking questions, no one's, what the hell happened to journalism, ladies and gentlemen? I am pissed off. Excuse my language about this whole thing here. What happened to journalism? How come a normal everyday person like me that's never been in broadcasting, 
never picked up a microphone to, to do politics or anything like that. Never went off into the political world or testing the political waters, even considering running for office myself. I've never had these thoughts before until now. And you know who made this environment healthy for me to think like this? Ladies and gentlemen, it was not Donald Trump. It was the leftist media. It was the leftist Democrats. It was the leftist lefties. It was the left liberals. It was people that want to take this country to the left. It was the socialists in this country. It was the Marxists in this country. The Bernie Sanders of the world. The Sandy Ocasio-Cortez is of the world. This is the reason why I'm here fighting, breathing, speaking into this microphone. And so here comes Hunter popping up on stage with his dad, the crime family, the Biden crime family, possibly the president of the United States. We just can't let that happen, ladies and gentlemen. Then you have these idiots out there. They're going to sit and tell you, why don't you just accept the loss? Accept the loss, man. Accept the loss. Your guy lost. I don't understand what's happening. Idiocracy, a great movie for everyone to watch. If you look at the left side of the spectrum, here we have the lefties and how they represent America. Well, you know, there's all these irregularities, but hey, Joe Biden won. Well, we have this guy coming out and he's signing out for Davis. Not one, not two, not a dozen, ladies and gentlemen. Hundreds which I believe will turn to thousands. The president warned about this here. How are you going to accept the loss? That's like me being a boxer and I'm in the ring and I'm knocking the guy up against the, the, the turnbuckle and the, and, the, and the rope. He comes back, punches me one time. The whole crowd cheers. <sighs> Mind you, this guy has not let, let me paint the picture for you ladies. You guys ready? This reminds me, people telling me to accept the loss. It reminds me of a boxer. <laughs> We're in there, we're getting down, we're focused, we're swinging, we're exchanging blows. The only thing is, the other opponent, he's not hitting me at all. He hasn't hit me at all, but I'm tagging him. I, oh, hit him in the corner, beating him down, punishing him, putting a Mike Tyson type beating on my opponent. Then all of a sudden, in the 11th round, shh, in the 11th round, ladies and gentlemen, he gets a blow and he hits me in the shoulder. Ladies and gentlemen, the crowd is going crazy. They're cheering. Ah, this is exciting. Knock him out. And as they, he hits me in the shoulder and I feel the brunt moves me a little bit. You have people on the side of the ring, people out there in the arena. Just accept the loss. Give up, give up, give up. Why would I give up? And I've been pummeling this guy all night. In fact, I'm on the cusp of knocking him out. And he got lucky and staggered into a punch into the shoulder. That's just like them telling Trump, just accept the loss. While black unemployment has dropped, Hispanic unemployment has dropped. The economy is booming, especially pre-pandemic. We are still in the process of a V-shaped recovery. Give up, give up. Wait a minute. Joe Biden just hit me on the shoulder. You're talking about the presidential night of the race. Donald Trump was tagging that, ladies and gentlemen, Donald Trump was tagging every single blow, every single flurry, every single dynamic of a punch. He was serving him. Then all of a sudden, in the 11th, 11th round, all the votes stopped. Everyone stopped counting. And right then and there, that hit to the shoulder, the whole nation that was awake saw it. And all of a sudden, Joe Biden started to pick up steam. And then all the cheers, all the boisterous uh, clapping and excitement for one hit. But mind you, that hit, he got lucky. If he wins this election, ladies and gentlemen, this will be the purest form of luck because so many eyes, so many irregularities, and they're telling you to give up, to quit, just, just, just stop. OK, that's not how it works. A boxer in the ring will fight until the be ding, 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 the last bell. That's the boxer in the ring's responsibility. So we have Hillary Rotten, Clinton, who's never conceded ever, which she wants the president to concede. 
She's never conceded, ever. So, she's never been able to go for 2016. But she's telling our president to concede. But there's a problem I have with that. And it blows my mind, absolutely. No one in the mainstream media is calling her out on this either. And the reason why I say this is because the media is dead. Here is Hillary Rodden Clinton talking about Joe Biden. But you heard what she was saying about the president. He needs to concede. She never conceded. In fact, she still thinks she's the president. Back in 2016, that election was different. See, they didn't have their plan in place. Donald Trump was supposed to lose. Guys, put all this stuff together. Donald Trump was supposed to lose. The reason why they didn't care about the Republican down ticket ballots is because they were looking to take out Trump. That's all they cared, that's all they cared about. They said to themselves in their dark rooms, I can promise you this was happening here. Let's not let 2016 happen again. And what was happening the election night, ladies and gentlemen, 2016 part two. And so it blows my mind that she says this right here with her rotten self. Video bite number six, please. Hillary Rotten Clinton. Watch what she says, but they want our president to concede. Let's go. Say Biden, you know, win, you know, say Biden wins. What do you think Trump will do? Look, I think that they have a couple of scenarios that they're looking uh, toward. One is messing up absentee balloting. Right, of course. You know, they, yeah. they believe that helps them. Um, so that they then get maybe a narrow advantage in the Electoral College on election day. Uh, because remember, uh, we've, we've seen a couple of cases like in Wisconsin where they did everything they could to mess up voting, uh, but because uh, courts had ordered uh, absentee ballots to be counted if they were postmarked on election day, uh, Democrats actually won uh, uh, some important uh, races there. In the recent Michigan primary, I was told in Detroit, the Republicans had 40 lawyers challenging absentee mail-in voting. And a local reporter talking to one of the lawyers he knew was told it was a dry run uh, for November. So we've got to have a massive legal operation. I know the Biden campaign is working on that. We have to have poll workers. And I urge people who are able to uh, be a poll worker. We have to have our own uh, teams of people to counter the the force of intimidation. This is a big organizational challenge, but at least we know more about what they're going to do. And you know, Joe Biden should not concede under any circumstances because I think this is going to drag out and eventually I do believe he will win if we don't give an inch and if we are as focused and relentless as the other side is. Just unbelievable. Unbelievable. My question to you guys is, how is it okay for them to say that or push their candidate not to concede? but they're pushing another candidate to concede. That doesn't make sense to me, but it does. Here's what it is. They are crooks, okay? There's a double standard. There's a reason why Hillary Clinton's not in jail. There's a double standard. The reason why John Brennan is not in jail. There's a no, another double standard while Clapper <laughs> is not in jail. Clapper, Comey, uh, Ray, all these guys. Need to be, in fact, Ray needs to be fired. If I was President Donald Trump, I would fire Christopher Ray, like yesterday. I would fire Gina Haspel like yesterday. Because she was a woman, everyone's like, oh, you know what I'm saying? And people have, they were the ones out there bash. But see, now by her action, the way she's been behaving lately, seem like the leftist liberals like her too. Birds of a feather flock together. And a negative and a positive creates a negative. It never does the opposite. And so, this is the reason why I believe Joe Biden was so calm the whole time. And he explains it all, once again, right here. I look at it, and I'm like, how do you hide in a basement? 
that long. How do you... How do you put yourself in a position to where you don't answer a question from the media for 110 days? Ladies, this is facts, ladies and gentlemen. For 110 days, Joe Biden hid in his basement, wasn't on the campaign trail. Donald Trump was taking every single possible question available. And this guy's taking none. But you're telling me he's the president of the United States of America? I'm not buying it. I'm just not buying it. So video by number seven, the reason why he's so calm, the reason why Hillary Rotten Clinton's telling him not to concede. Right here, video by number seven, let's go. Secondly, we're in a situation where we have put together and you guys did, did it for our administration, the President Obama's administration before this. We have put together, I think the most extensive and inclusive voter fraud organization in the history of American politics. Extensive, inclusive voter fraud organization. You guys, was Joe Biden telegraphing what was really going to happen? Just some thoughts. Did Joe Biden know that this would happen that, that night? Did he know that all the cogs would stop turning did he know that he'd be the front runner? Did he know that he would get all those votes? Did he know he'd get more votes than any president in American history? Probably so. But you look at this. The most extensive, con inclusive fraud organization. Organization. Joe Biden is a crime boss. Let's be honest. He is a crime boss. And, and so people sit and they ask these questions and they say, well, maybe it was a mistake. Joe made a mistake. He made a mistake like little sheeple. I don't think so because no one in his campaign corrected. He didn't correct it immediately. I would say anti-fraud organization. Okay, inclusive. That means, let's be hush-lipped about it. That's why Obama seemed like he started getting some steam at the end with the bashing and the lies. Then they have the Republican factor. Let's start with the mini Mitt Romney. Who names their son Mitt? Mitt, lunchtime, coming mother. Mitt Romney, what a fraud. In 2012, he lost to Obama, okay? He was weak. And here you are coming to try to recommend in 2020, okay, eight years later on that we should concede and you're a loser? Here's, here's the point, guys. He's always just like the president. I wouldn't take his advice at all. I would shut him down. It's so These people are just so amazing. Christy Noam criticizes Romney for conceding to Biden. D.C. elites are eager to return to business as usual. South Dakota Governor Christy Noam, who's a rock star, is slamming Senator Mitt Romney of Utah. Utah, you guys need to vote this bum out. This guy's a straight bum, and he denies you guys and you guys' values. If you're going for a socialist, ladies and gentlemen of Utah, our neighboring state, well, I'm right here in Las Vegas, Nevada. You guys are in Utah. You guys are close to us. Vote that bum out. He, he's a Democrat. He's a rhino. But so it says Senator, Senator Mitt Romney, Utah, for his concession to Democrats, Joe Biden and Senator Kamala Harris saying the Washington, D.C. political establishment is eager to return to business as usual. On Saturday, the establishment media called the presidential election for Biden. Romney sent out congratulations, calling the former vice president and Harris people of goodwill and admirable character. Let me ask you guys a question. Mitt Romney is older than me. Mitt Romney has grandchildren, probably great grandchildren, I'm sure. How is it possible that with all the irregularities, the party that you're supposed to be fighting for, Cindy McCain, Megan McCain, the whole McCain family, you guys are a disgrace, okay? Your husband, yeah, war hero, but you guys are a disgrace. I'm like the president. You guys, McCain family, you guys are a disgrace. That president, right? But all the irregularities and people coming up, Mitt Romney, you as a responsible Utah congressman, I mean senator, should say, hey, wait a minute. Something's not right. We really need to get to the bottom of this. How is it that Al Gore can get all this attention and get the time that he needs, but President Donald Trump can't because they hate him so much? 
In response, Norm posted a statement slamming Romney for wanting to return political establishment norms of Washington, D.C., even as serious election integrity concerns have risen. That's my point. Now, she's thinking like this. What makes you think 72 million, not 63, 72 million Americans who feel disenfranchised? President Donald Trump's campaign has said that at least 660,000 ballots are still in question. Not one, not two, not 10, not 20, not even 40,000. 660,000 ballots are still in question. Let me tell you why. Pennsylvania, the night of the election, we have President Donald Trump up by almost 800,000 votes. And you're telling me a potted plant, someone who hid in his basement for 110 days, who answered no questions, someone who drew flies. Oh, excuse me, flies. I really apologize for offending you flies out there. But someone who would draw, draw 12 cars, and I think the most people we ever draw was 781 people. While you have on the other side, President Donald Trump bringing in 25,000, 35,000 over and over and over. Not in just one state, not in one city. This is it's like you go to buffet, right? You got this morbidly obese gentleman sitting next to you. He's breathing hard. And he's like, can I sit somewhere else? You know, here. He's kind of like Baby D. There's this old movie called Friday or Next Friday or whatever. There was a character called Baby D. And the, de the depiction of this character was like she had all types of uh, fruity treats and all types of uh, uh, filling, fruit fillings and pie fillings just and fangs. And she, uh. so you have this morbidly obese man sitting next to you and the question I have is, as he's sitting there, you're like, hmm, 660,000 votes, ballot still in question. And this guy here, he's eating all the food. This guy here, he's excited because I got this whole smorgasbord, right? I can see if it was one setting and he ate and he left. No, no, no. We have one, then another serving, another serving. We have all these ballots still in question. This guy's eating up all the food. But they're telling me, oh, he's not, he's not real. Let's just move on. You know, let's, you know, let's business as usual. This guy's eating you out of house and home. So the President Trump's campaign has said that the 600, at least 60,000 ballots are still in question. We have this obese guy here. He's eating all the food. He's eating all the ballots. How is it possible that you have a whole restaurant full of people. Here we go. Everyone's eating their food, right? In fact, there's plenty of food for everyone. The, the heavy set guy, his table at this particular time, it looks depleted. It's like a cup of water on there and, and probably, you know, probably like a salad. He's not happy with that. And so somewhere in the middle of the day, and I give these analogies because I want to connect with the American people. Somewhere in the middle of the day, all the plates, and we got about 115 people inside this restaurant. Oops, excuse me, pre-COVID. Pre-COVID example. Inside this restaurant. And all of a sudden, the food that they had on their plate, it's gone. And they have like a little strawberry with some whipped cream around it. And now all the food is on the big guy's table. And he's eating all the food. The, the waitresses come out and they're like, what, this is, this is not normal. Mr. Jenkins, you guys been coming for 10 years. I just served your dish. How'd your dish get over there? He has these big old giant piles of, of, of food and plates and dishes and cups and everything. And so they expect us to believe, just like the waitress coming out that all the people went and gave their food to the fat guy. No, people were physically hungry when they came into the restaurant. The Americans are physically hungry, spiritually hungry, mentally hungry for this country to continue to remain great. So those 660,000 ballots in question. Guys, when you go from an 800,000 swing, being up and everything stops and all of a sudden those four or five states are flipped for the opponent in the last minute while everybody's sleeping, it doesn't pass the smell test. It just doesn't. And so it says they're still in question the swing state of Pennsylvania while, not, not, while noting irregularities with counting ballots in Michigan, Wisconsin, Arizona, and Georgia, and Nevada, this isn't just one state. We have multiple states. So it is systemic, and there is a systematic process that's going on that's not fair and on the up and up to American people, and we need to shoot it down. And so, in one instance, Atron County, Michigan, flipped from Biden to Trump after a glitch with the computer software we talked about earlier. 
cause a miscalculation on the region's votes. The same software is being used in the swing state of Georgia. So check that article out, Bre Breitbart, but Mitt Romney, shut the hell up. You're an idiot. And so we got these Republicans out there. The McCain family, so to speak. The Bush family, so to speak. This is a tough yeah. business oh, to run it, for oh, president. Oh, I know. You're a tough guy, Jeb. And, it's, and we need to have a leader that is <laughs> real principled. Tough. You're never going to be president of the United States tough, by insulting yeah. your way to well, the let's presidency. Let's see. I'm at 42, and you're at 3. So, Doesn't so far, matter. I'm doing better. Doesn't matter. So far, I'm doing better. You know, you started off over here, Jeb. You're moving over further and further. Pretty soon, you're going to be off the end. This doesn't do a thing to solve the problem. One at a time. One at a time. It sounds more. That guy right there. Congratulating Joe Biden. That kind of tells you what camp they're in. It just blows my mind, ladies and gentlemen, that we have a country full of useful idiots that will destroy their country to get rid of one person that's extremely not just good for the country, but good for the world. If Trump is so bad for the world, how come four Nobel Peace Prize nominations when Obama got one just for being black, which he ain't all black? AOC urges Democrats not to take Biden Republicans backers serious. Uh, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen, it's on. You remember I just called them useful idiots. That's exactly what they are. Representative Ocasio-Cortez, Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez, a Democrat of New York, is urging Democrats not to take seriously the roles that some Republicans, including former Governor John Kasich, here we go, ladies and gentlemen, played in elevating Joe Biden to the White House. Ocasio-Cortez has long shown a distaste for moderates in both parties. This is how Ocasio-Cortez looks. You're either on one side or the other. The moderate, I'm going to work across the aisle. That's not how she's wired. That's why she can't can control the Senate, ladies and gentlemen. But she took to social media on Saturday to rebuke cases for suggesting earlier in the day that progressives had nearly cost the Biden election. That's a hot button for her. That's a, that puts a bee in her body. They're just swarming around. John Cases, who did not deliver the Ohio to Dems, is saying folks like Elon Omar, who did, did not, who did deliver Minnesota, are the problem. So John Cases, who did, who did not deliver Ohio because he lost to the Dems, is saying folks, Elon Omar, who did deliver Minnesota are the problem. Ocasio-Cortez says, please don't take these people serious. Go back to celebrating and building power. That is the key word, ladies and gentlemen. She is concerned about power. That's it, just power. And I find that curious because now's the time for the Democrats. I believe that Joe Biden will do this to begin to listen to the other half of the country um, has had to say. Keisha said on CNN, you notice he's a Republican, he's on CNN, that should tell you about everything. None of these guys ever went to Fox. I'm sure they'll show up on Fox now, okay? I think the other half of the country has felt that they have been listened to. It's going to be up to Democrats to listen. The former governor who publicly endorsed Joe Biden at the Democratic National Convention in August proceeded to argue that the best thing that's happened to the former vice president is the Republicans appear to likely keep control of the Senate for the next two years. It will allow Joe Biden to do what he does best. It will allow him to govern as a moderate, he said. The far left can push him as hard as they want. And frankly, Democrats have to make it clear to the far left that they almost cost him the election. They did cost him election, ladies and gentlemen. John Kasich, the sun signs of the dogs we're in some days. He was absolutely right. It almost cost him election, which I'm going to say it did cost him the election. John Kasich set him up right there. And so... They're not going to take them serious. What they're going to do, they're going to turn on all of you idiots out there that think that they're in their corner. So dumb. These people are so dumb and so dishonest. Then I got to turn to another article I have here. You know, check this out. You guys are going to love this one here. Ocasio-Cortez again. And then I'm going to talk about social media. Ocasio-Cortez calls Democrats incompetent after election losses. She's a firebrand. She is a bee in their Biden. She is a thorn in their side. She is a proverbial mess. And how she got elected, it's a shame because she's never going to try to go anywhere now. The, the career politician is what has American citizens in the world upset and pissed off. And the number of Trump supporters are growing as we speak. Rep Representative uh, Ocasio-Cortez of New York called Democratic Party incompetent for not placing progressives at the top 
positions, warning former Vice President Joe Biden that if he does not select far left people for top positions, the Democrat Party will lose big in the 2022 midterm elections. They better take what she's saying is serious. This woman is a socialist, Marxist. She has issues. She definitely has mental disorder. Check that out over at Breitbart too. So they're going for blood. So we have the Republicans come and add some votes for Joe Biden, so to speak. I don't believe it was enough to get him over the hump. But then you have her tell him, don't take him serious. Then you have Ocasio-Cortez. There is infighting amongst the Democrat Party. Goody. Let me tell you why. If, if the Democrats want to up and up, I'd have no problems with what they do. But they have problems and they hate this country. The social media. I call them the new anchors. And I want to talk about them for a second, too. What social media says is gospel. Now, I said some months ago at... You know, uh, Biden had a chance. If Biden had that chance to win due to COVID, um, that kind of thing went by the wayside, with the exception of BLM looting the streets if he went uh, because of this COVID thing. No one's riding in the streets. No one's tearing anything up, right? No one's pulling down statues. Everything is normal. Everyday citizens, I mean, everyday leftists, the New York leftists, um, a city of bastion of lockdowns. And rules are regular, except for if you're Black Lives Matter or BLNM, which have been pretty quiet the last few days for some reason. In fact, the rioters have been quiet. The American people sit back and say, hmm, how come when one candidate they think is president, they're tearing stuff up, when the other one wins, they calm down? It's not because Joe Biden is a peacemaker, ladies and gentlemen. They are Democrats out there causing problems. But it's a bastion of lockdowns. The people are still uninformed. They're still ignorant. It's not bliss. I don't care how filled up you are. Like a chocolate eclair. Liberalism is a mental disorder. But here's New York, though. We have the people of the city of New York. They're out packing the streets now, celebrating. Ah, we won. We won. Because their guy won. No mask. No social distancing. I said many months ago that COVID will probably go away too after the election. All the inexperience, all the decades of lies, all the decades of bigotry, all the decades of getting nothing done. So all of a sudden he's going to bring everybody together. That's what they want. The government. Look, let me tell you what, whatever New York gets, that's what they deserve. They deserve the government they get. That's why they have Cuomo. That's why they have, what's that mayor's name? Bill Communist de Blasio. Idiots. And so you have Democrats celebrating, packing the streets, not thinking about COVID. But no one's saying anything in the media. They're celebrating. Ah, uh, they're excited about it. Well, over at the Daily Wire, that Democrats packed the streets, celebrating Biden victory. Janice Dean blisters authorities for hypocrisy over COVID-19, which is so true. Following the legacy media, that's what you call them, the legacy media, announcement proclaiming the Democratic presidential nominee Joe Biden, winner of the 2020 election. Thousands of people packed the streets of the city uh, around, the, uh, around the country, cities around the country, excuse me. On Saturday, Fox News uh, meteorologist Janice Dean, whose husband tragically lost both his parents to COVID-19 while there were residents of assistant living facilities of nursing homes in New York, fired off a powerful Twitter thread denouncing the authorities for prohibiting families from being together during holidays or while their relatives were dying, but permitting huge gatherings of people to celebrate Biden's results, like Black Lives Matter. Here you have the mayor out painting signs like we're three-year-olds in front of Trump Tower. Dean began to thread tweeting pictures of the crowds, the hundreds of thousands of people packing the streets without distance while so many of us couldn't have funerals. You guys remember that? Remember the John Lewis funeral while most of that place was packed? There were no social distancing there either. Many, can, many still can't see their loved ones because of restrictions. Kids can't, can't go to school and businesses are closed, she warned. We will remember this. And ladies and gentlemen, we will remember this. This is a complete joke because we can't worship. We can't protest. And that's why I admire Trump. He went out and said, you know what? These aren't rallies. These are protests. The immigration lawyer, Matthew Colgan, replied, my wife just lost her battle with cancer, and we were limited to just 30 attendees at the service. This is a text here. And you got other ones here. I mean, uh, other uh, tweets. She pointed out that the draconian restrictions 
on private gatherings, so many families have been told that they can't uh, gather for Thanksgiving. They can't even see, I can't even see my mom in over a year. I haven't seen my mom in over a year. The hypocrisy that allowed what this is, is mind blowing. The media, the liberal leaders, you screamed at Trump gatherings, but are so quiet about what's happening now. You guys should go over there and check that out. It is a devastating piece. She targeted the New York governor, Andrew Cuomo. As she quoted Fox News, the New York governor, Andrew Cuomo, still will be increasing the National Guard presence at airports at his, in the state. After refusing to do so, at a summer of rioting, looting, estimated to have cost the New York tens of thousands, tens of millions, excuse me, with the M. The Democrat governor said during the morning news conference has upped it the number of local law, he has upped to the local law enforcement and the National Guard personnel at airports statewide for the following holiday weekend's travel period. Nothing that Cuomo was going to speak to former Bill Clinton spokesman and current ABC News anchor George Stephanopoulos, she fired. Maybe at G. Stephanopoulos can ask why your boss keeps hiding the total numbers of senior deaths in New York City. And why is it okay for hundreds of thousands of people to gather to celebrate, at, but the National Guard is out to stop people from seeing their families for Thanksgiving? Ladies and gentlemen, think about that. That doesn't make sense, just like the, the, the election results doesn't make sense. So we need to get off into the bottom of this here. So she blisters them. I want to get off into video bite number nine. And let's go with that clip right now. Let's go. He has, uh, he'll be exiting uh, office in the next few weeks, Joe. Steve, quick question, because... Unfortunately, coronavirus isn't taking a break. So are people out there with masks? Are they staying distanced or is it just are they so overcome that um, they're throwing caution to the wind? There, there is. Uh, that's a good question. There's, I'd say 99 percent of people here are wearing masks. There's some kind of face covering distancing. That's a little bit harder to do right now, uh, given just how it's, it's just one of those moments where you intrinsically want to be around people. Uh, and there is not much in the way of social distancing around uh, Columbus Circle right now. I actually had to... Stand. Shaking my head. Just amazing. You guys see that? You see that? And don't get it twisted, ladies and gentlemen. These guys are celebrating because Joe Biden. They're celebrating because they think they got rid of the orange man. Bad orange man. Stopping progress in America in the White House, which is so good for America. And these people, look what they're doing. What happened to COVID? How come they're out there? What happened to all the restrictions? How come they abide by the law and when they think it's okay, they can come out? Everyone doesn't want COVID to get out of control, right? These people are liars and hypocrites. I'm going to tell you like that. And what about Chicago? No one's talking about Chicago. Then we have Follywood, fake Hollywood, those bastards. These celebrities are a disgrace, I think. I know. Robert De Niro, they're grotesque, they're disrespectful. And they gloat when they think they've won. Look at them. Realize, realize four years ago, they were crying. And now they're celebrating. Everyone is shutting the president out. They're cutting away from the press conferences. They're cutting away from when he's talking. They've crowned their king. So everything in the Trump administration, they don't want to hear anything. The media needs to be restructured. And we need to look at the Constitution heavily about the clauses of free speech and the press and stuff, free press, because the press is not free, except for this Newsmax, maybe. Oh, wait, uh, American One News. But they're shutting the president out. They're cutting away. And they're saying things like misinformation, not true. They have the same talking points with the warning labels of Twitter and Facebook. You think these guys in big tech aren't in the bed for Biden? Yes, everyone knows. Are you a judge to be able to look and say, wait a minute, who are you to judge and say, wait a minute, what he's saying is not true. Who are you to judge? Think about it. The fact checks, who are the fact checkers? And these people are the worst losers they ever said. Look, look at 2016. They spent four years trying to discredit President Donald Trump at every single chance. Every si and they impeached the president. But we have these loser, lo lunatic liberals in Hollywood. And just look at the graceful words that they use to the president as they think he's lost. Stephen King, you lost effort, concede and get the hell out. He still has 70 something days in his presidency. Once again, What's the rush, ladies and gentlemen? Why are we rushing? Why? Hollywood celebs tears, tears and dance as media call race for Biden. America is a part of the world again. What? How are we not a part of the world 
because we're saying America first. And all these Nobel Prizes, you know, you don't get Nobel Peace Prizes for staying only in America. You idiots. John Legend, Christy, Te Christy Teigen, dance to F Donald Trump after media calls race for Biden. Michael Rappaport, Trump lost because he's a cock sucker and a miserable piece of SHIT. Real classy, real classy, ladies and gentlemen. Leslie Jones melts down over Mitch McConnell. Piece of indignant SHIT. Have you guys ever heard conservatives or Republicans talk about their opponents like this? Never. And if it has been, it's been rare cases. Ladies and gentlemen, these people are like this all the time. While no one cares about the 25 shot Chicago and the four killed uh, fatally Sunday morning in Lightfoot, Chicago. What about Chicago? So we're going to be on the front here. We're going to keep fighting for America. We're going to be excited for the cause that we're fighting for. Because ladies and gentlemen, we definitely have a country to save. And we have an opportunity right now in 2020 to reverse this crap because there are legit concerns. And if the media wants to stay complacent, if the media wants to stay asleep, you will have a sleeping giant, not just in 2020, but in 2022, 2024, 2028, 2026. And we will dominate and pound you guys into the sand until you guys understand this country is worth saving. This country is worth uh, living in this country is worth protecting that's my take on it and that's all i can get to today got so much more but we gotta wait till next week so all my fans out there and all of you guys are out there in radio land appreciate you guys let's fight let's support the president and go to his website and donate five dollar one dollar whatever it is to where we can stop the steal go to stop the steal.com stop the steal.com because they're trying to steal this election and we still have time but we have to move fast Ladies and gentlemen, until next week, on the America's Voice, your stellar captain, signing out. Yanni, see you then.